Hello everybody. Welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today I wanted to talk about uh, vintage computing and uh, how you can get into uh, vintage computing without actually buying a vintage computer. For a while now I've wanted to have a computer based on the Zilog Z80. Uh, I had a few Z uh, Zilog Z80 machines uh, when I was younger and uh, most of the time the computers that I had only had basic available and so uh, I didn't spend much time using early operating systems like CPM. So uh, the Xilog Z80 is an 8-bit microprocessor. Uh, it's based on the Intel 8080 processor. Uh, it has some extended instructions that make it uh, more useful. Uh, available in uh, speeds are, uh, for instance, here 2.5, 4, 6, 8, 10 megahertz, uh, up to 20 on certain versions. So this was a, a pretty neat processor back in the day. One of the things I like about it is that it has uh, static registers. So it can actually be manually clocked, although in the application that I'm going to be using, uh, it runs at uh, 4 megahertz. So like I said, a number of machines had it. The MITS Altair 8800, the uh, NASCOM 2, the Sinclair ZX80, the Sinclair ZX81, uh, NASCOM 1, Micro B. Uh, there were other machines out there. Uh, there were a lot of uh, kit-built uh, S100 machines along the lines of the MITS Altair 8800 that uh, also use that processor. So a way to get into it today is the RetroBrew Computers Project. <clears throat> now this uh, RetroBrew Computers Project, uh, it has a number of other uh, boards available uh, that will accept other processors. So there is a uh, SBC version 2 that handles the V80, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, the Z80. Uh, there's also another board out there that will do the uh, 6502, 6802, 6809, uh, 68K boards, uh, various other boards out there to do other things. So uh, that's pretty neat as well. Like I said, I'm using the SBC V2, so I have a uh, Zilog Z80 at 4 megahertz a uh, 512 kilobyte uh, kilobit uh, SRAM. Uh, I've got a uh, EEPROM in there, a 27C801 uh, serial interface, parallel interface, all the stuff that's on the list here. This is what the uh, the board looks like. Mine's very similar to that, although I'm not using a, a text tool socket for my ROM. I'm just using a standard dual wipe socket. So this is what I started with uh, several years ago three, four years. I built this. I had it working. It's not really all that useful without some of the other modules, which that's fairly standard for uh, kit built stuff. So the next board that I built uh, is actually the Backplane 8, and then uh, I've built the ECB PropIO V2. So this uses a uh, Parallax propeller processor uh, to give you uh, a piezo uh, speaker. Uh, that's very low uh, fidelity, but uh, does work, almost like the uh, the built-in speaker on a PC. Uh, SD card, where you can emulate uh, local storage, a PS2 keyboard port, a VGA port that runs text only, and uh, a serial port. So that's uh, very useful for many things. Um, I'm also working on building the ECB bus monitor. I haven't finished it yet. I'm still waiting on a few parts to show up, namely the uh, resistor packs that are uh, used. Once I get those, uh, I will have that board as well. The ECB bus extender, uh, mostly that's so I can have the uh, connections on the board so I can plug in my logic analyzer. And of course, uh, software-wise, uh, there is uh, Wayne Wharton's uh, ROM WBW which runs on uh, most of the uh, boards that they have available on retrobrewcomputers.org. Uh, in this case, I'm using uh, one of the latest revisions, and uh, this is basically uh, CPM 2.2 uh, in a ROM, and uh, the machine will boot from this, and uh, here is the compatibility information. So it works with the SBC uh, version 1, version 2, the Zeta, the N8, the uh, Mark IV, and the uh, RC2014. So here is the uh, link to CPM 
CPM is a control program monitor or a control program for microcomputers. Uh, originally developed by uh, Gary Kildall of Digital Research. And uh, this is what uh, DR-DOS was eventually based on and what uh, MS-DOS was eventually based on. So it shares uh, a lot of uh, structural elements uh, in that uh, they were used in the, uh, the later softwares, the later operating systems. Once you have the, uh, the boards built and uh, you're looking for software, there are resources out there. Uh, CPM itself was open sourced uh, back a few years ago, uh, I believe in 2014 or 2015. And there are various archives out there where you can find um, programming software, games, application software, things along those lines. Uh, one of the things that I think is uh, pretty cool is uh, you can find Zork. So you have Zork 1, 2, and 3 available for... Uh, here you have CPM 86 and uh, the one above is CPM 80. So CPM would run on uh, multiple architectures, and you have to make sure you get one that's either uh, architecture independent or uh, specifically for your architecture. Here's another website. I'm going to include links to all of these sites uh, in the video description so that you can uh, go and take a look. And uh, it's a pretty neat project. It will cost you a little bit of money to get started with it. Uh, I would... I hate to say that I've probably spent more than I believe that uh, I would have on here. I've probably spent at least several hundred dollars on this thing, but uh, it's a neat thing to play around with. Let me go ahead and bring up my terminal program. So uh, once you build a correct serial cable for this and hook it up to a serial port, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, 38400, 8N1, uh, kind of normal communications parameters. I've got it connected to a, uh, an AT power supply but uh, you could use a, uh, a 5 volt power supply of uh, sufficient amperage and uh, that would get you going too. Uh, these boards only use 5. The prop I.O. needs 3.3 uh, volt but it generates it uh, on the board. So I'll go ahead and switch on. We can see the startup information here. And there we go. So we have available CPM and Z system. Uh, Z system is based on uh, CPM. We also have monitor. We can list our disks, or we can tell it to start from a Z, uh, disk. So I'm going to tell it Z system, and uh, it's telling us that we have uh, drives A through J available. Uh, A is going to be the RAM disk, and it will be empty at this point. I don't have a uh, backup battery to keep the, uh, the static RAM going, so every time I restart the machine, uh, it blanks it. B is uh, the ROM disk where a CPM is at. C, I've put uh, Z80 assembler on there. And I think the only other drive that has anything in it here is D. And let's see what's on D. Oh, this is the um, Microsoft Basic Interpreter. Um, I, uh, on another SD card, I have uh, I have Zork 1, 2, and 3 on that one. So the way it handles the SD card is uh, you can generate CPM slices. So there's no real partitioning on CPM, uh, but you can set aside uh, 8 megabyte uh, slices uh, starting at sector 0. And uh, the most that it supports is 8, uh, 8 megabyte slices. So you can uh, you can always use a card that's bigger than 64 megabytes, but uh, that's all it's really going to utilize. Of course, you could uh, partition the rest of it off as uh, FAT partition, uh, FAT32, uh, something along those lines. As long as uh, whatever you're doing doesn't touch uh, the uh, slices that are reserved for CPM. So I can also, uh, let's see here, the command structure is a little bit different. I can stat and it will tell me how much space I have available. Uh, the To copy files and, uh, and move files and do things like that, you would use the pip command, which uh, there's command references out there that will tell you how to use those commands. I will include some links to those as well. So that's a basic introduction. And uh, like I said, I'm going to include links to the information below. So if you're interested, go take a look at those links. And if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I'd like to uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'd like to tell you that I hope you have a great day.